Hello, welcome back. Uh, we are now going to look at identity management as part of deploying a TKG management cluster on vSphere using the UI. Now, the first thing to mention is that in identity management is optional, so you could turn it off if you're not interested in using it and you are just going to use administrator access to all of your TKG clusters. However, the likelihood is that you may not want to give full administrative privileges to all of your developers who are using your clusters. So you might want to implement some sort of identity management so you can control which developers have access to which Kubernetes clusters. Now we have two identity management methodologies supported here. The first is OIDC, but the one that I am going to implement is secure LDAP or LDAP-S there. So my uh, integration is going to be with uh, Microsoft Active Directory. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in the name or the fully qualified domain name of my domain controller and I give it the secure LDAP port 636. Now, what is really nice here is that there's a verify LDAP configuration. So at each step that we populate these fields, we could go ahead and verify the LDAP configuration. So let's start. And immediately I can see that even though I've put in my fully qualified domain name and port for my domain controller, I get a X509 unknown uh, authority here. And if we look down, there is a root CA required. So I would need to put that in for my domain controller in order to be authenticated to actually query my domain controller or my uh, LDAP identity management source. Let's try that to verify once more and let's see if we can at least get the connect part to work. Yes, we can. Great. Okay, so the rest is just really to do with uh, binding, to do with user search criteria and group search criteria. So with that in mind, let's populate some of the bind uh, distinguished names. So I'm going to use the following bind distinguished name, which is essentially just using the administrator of my environment. Let me just show you all of this, like so. Looks good. And obviously the password here as well. Let's try that. Once again, let's verify the LDAP configuration. Let's see now if the bind part will work successfully. Okay, it hasn't. Invalid credentials. Sounds good. Maybe the password is not quite right. Let me try that once more and verify it again. Yes, okay, great. So the connect and the bind are now working correctly. So now the next sections are to do with user search attributes and group search attributes. So I'm going to start populating some of these as well. Again, it's looking for a distinguished name here, a DN. So I'll give that here. Uh, so you can see it. So I'm going to use the common name of users, filter, user search. I could just leave that the way it is. And the user ID, I think that's okay as well. So group search attributes, let's again get the distinguished name. There we go. And I do need to have a group search filter. I'm going to use the object class of group here. The user attribute in group search, we can set to user principal name. I think that's okay. Great. So with that in mind, let's now try and do a verify the LDAP configuration. And I'm going to use a user that I know is in my active directory. And I know that this particular user, um, I want to grant access to the clusters later on. So let's see if everything now works. Excellent. So that suggests that we have gone through and we've configured the endpoint, the bind, uh, the user search attributes and the group search attributes correctly. So you might want to play around with these. I've done some very basic ones here, as you can tell, but very useful is the verify the LDAP configuration that you can use to make sure that whatever attributes you use in the identity management spec for LDAP uh, are actually working. And at this point, we can move on, but we will cover this next section about OS image, because this is a little bit uh, involved as well. We'll cover that in the next demonstration.